Raised beds have transformed the way I garden. They are absolutely incredible. And in today's video, we're giving you five easy DIYs to make them even better. Most of the plants we like to grow in the summer, in the spring, they like to climb cucumbers, peas, all of that stuff. But raised beds don't have something for them to climb up. But with a couple dollars worth of bamboo and twine, you can make a simple trellis to fit any plant. So the first thing to do is just tie in a simple overhand knot a little loop around one of these stakes. Next, we'll do the lashing, which is just wrapping it around every bamboo stake three or four times. Then you wanna snug it up and make sure these are all laying flat. Next up, you have to do the frapping. So that's between each bamboo stake. You're gonna basically lock in those lashings by coming over a couple times per gap. After two frapping rounds, you skip a stake and move on and repeat down the line. I'll do once more for good measure and make my way over here. Then all I'm gonna do here is just a simple loop to tie this off. All tied up, let's get it in the garden. The beauty of the bamboo trellis is that it can be almost anything you want. I mean, look how easy this is to put in here. If I was growing peas, this would be absolutely perfect. I could add more legs if I wanted to and just tie those up, or I could learn different styles of lashing and tie up a different style of bamboo trellis. For example, I could do one that was flat by lashing them perpendicular like this. So the last step is just to kind of shove it in the ground a little bit. And there we go. I've got a perfectly rigid bamboo trellis that costs nearly nothing. And you could make it from sticks and fishing line if you wanted to. If you have your raised bed set up somewhere like a patio and you have a hard time getting irrigation to your bed, then these handsome little guys are the solution for you. These are called oyas and they're actually an ancient method of watering plants. The way it works is that you have a semi-porous clay vessel and when you fill it with water, the plant roots will actually wrap themselves around it and pull exactly as much water as they need to grow. So it's a really beautiful system because you actually don't need to worry about overwatering, underwatering, the plants are just going to self-regulate themselves. The way this works is that you dig a nice hole and for this size Oya, you want them about 10 to 12 inches from center to center on each other for the optimal spread of water. So we really wanna make sure that at least that shallow or that sort of narrow neck is actually buried and that's a pretty good spot right there. So all we need to do now is backfill the hole with soil and I like to kind of press it in a little bit to make sure that it's seated really well with the soil. So this is 10 inches right here to this point and now if I move my finger over, that is actually about 10 inches right there. So now these are about 10 inches apart. The only thing really left to do to make these work is actually just to fill them up. So you just take your hose, fill it with water until it starts overflowing from the top. And over some period of time, you wanna make sure that when you have a young seedling like this summer savory herb here, you are still watering it at the beginning because the way the system works is that the roots have to reach the vessel for that water to be distributed. So at the beginning, you are going to have to do a little bit of watering, but once this is set up, you've got a fully automated irrigation system. And these could last for quite a few days. In the summer, you might fill it more, but that's really it. I have two more to add into this bed, and this bed will now be fully watered by Oyas. Maybe it's early season and you wanna trap extra heat on your plants to help them grow, or it's later in the season and you actually need some shade net to protect them from the sun. Well, the structure we're building today can accomplish both. So let's get into the build right now. So today we are building this structure on a six in one bed. So I'm using the six in one maker pipe kit, which comes with these little brackets and these little clamps to hold on to fabrics. The only thing you actually need to go get is the conduit itself. So I'm gonna start by cutting this, these two pieces in half, and those are gonna be my support legs for the vertical section. You can use a hacksaw if you want, but honestly, it's pretty slow. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my sawzall with a metal cutting blade just to make my life a little bit easier. Now we have the legs cut and I already cut the top section. So let's go ahead and start assembling. So what I'm going to do now is slide this over the top of this conduit and loosely tighten it. If you tighten it too much, you can't actually fit the other members in. This piece is going to be the part that spans this direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp that piece down. And then the longer section is going to be spanning the length of the bed. So once you have your first couple pieces on, the only thing you have to do after that is finish attaching the rest of the legs and the cross members. So I'm gonna jump into that right now. Now the whole structure is in place, so let's flip it over. So the cool thing about this kit is that you could make this as tall, as wide, as skinny, whatever you wanna do, you could do it. In this case, I'm not quite making it the full length of the bed. And that's because I want the frost fabric to sit on the surface of the soil here, just to tuck it in a little bit tighter. So if you want, you could do what I'm doing right now, which is I'm just literally sinking this conduit into the soil behind me. And that's going to act as an anchor 
The other option you have is to just put rebar in the ground and then actually place this over the rebar. And that'll make it literally impossible to blow over. I don't have that crazy wind here, so I'm just opting to just push it into the soil slightly until it's just about level. Now we have the structure in place over the bed and the beauty of the system is now you could pretty much do whatever you want. You could apply frost fabric over the whole thing if you wanna provide a little extra heat for your bed. You could also pull strings off this as a trellis system. But the other cool thing is that you could also use it for shade. So we're gonna go ahead and demo putting some shade cloth on this. This is a six foot by 15 foot roll. And then now we'll cut this and we'll apply it to the top of the structure. And now here's the beauty is these little snap clamps. All you have to do is line up your fabric wherever you need it, take that clamp and just snap it over the top of the fabric and the conduit. Now it is stuck on there, clamp it on this side. You wanna start on one side and then push the other side down. And then you could throw a couple on the front and back as well. And the other really nice thing about this that I personally really like is that since it has this strong conduit structure, you could still go ahead, tie off a string, and pull yourself a string trellis straight down to your raised bed, just like that. And so here's how you build a structure for shade, frost fabric, hail netting, and also trellising all at the same time. Next upgrade is an in-bed DIY composter. You see these all over the place. You can make them with a five gallon bucket as well, or even something as small as this. It's like a couple gallons. All you need is a drill. You wanna put some holes in this, why? So that worms can move in and move out. They can circulate the compost that you're putting into the bucket into the bed that we're gonna place it in. Next, you wanna put it in the bed. In this particular case, it's kind of a nice use case because I have my teepee style trellis. I might grow some spring peas in this area and then I can throw a bunch of organic scraps in the middle here when I bury this and hopefully the worms, which I know are in this bed, will move it on out to those peas. I brought some inaugural scraps to throw in here. These are some artichoke scraps that sadly the season's over, they need to go. You can even steal some random plants that you've pulled out or some weeds. If you've got an extra bit of soil, you can always just add that in as well. All you need now is a lid. I've got the patent protected Epic Gardening cardboard cover here. That's going on, problem solved. If you're looking for raised bed mistakes to avoid, check this video out right here. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.